y'all until we get this. In my heart of stars. All right, 2019 seconds. I already pulled my wine. I ain't wasting no time. No blocking, okay? Um, guys, we grown over here. We all exercise our First Amendment right, okay? We all have the right to challenge people's First Amendment rights, so don't block them, okay? If you don't agree with them, you know what I'm saying? Unless they're being racist in the comment section or something like that, then yes, okay? But I don't want them blocked. I just want them in timeout because they feel it. Trust me. All right. Y'all ready for this Wednesday? Wow. Uh-huh. I hope y'all are. Now, um, real quick before we get started. With this interview, Miss Avanti Wright. All right, let me came, let me come to tell you how I linked with her. So I have a lot of celebrities that subscribe to the app. Okay, a lot of them. All right, a lot of them drop wine. A lot of them in there late night. They don't let they voice. They don't let their names be known, but they be in there. Okay, and so she was in there. Um, when we did our after show on Ariane Curry, the mistress to Martell Holt, uh, uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville, uh, you know, the show, okay? Don't be upset. I'm missing like five na- nails out of ten, okay? I'm trying to pop them off, so bear with me. Now, um, so she came on to share her experience, and so as she was sharing her experience on my app, Tasha K Live, uh, dot com, she dropped the bombshell. She was just like, you don't know who I am? And I'm like, oh, what? Avanti, right? I had to go look it up. And I said, oh, this was before I was blogging. This was when I was reading the blogs. You remember? Uh-huh. You remember when the blogs was hot when you had to read them? They had no video. You understand what I'm saying? So I had asked her, you know what I'm saying, on the live stream if she wouldn't mind coming up and sharing her story because she has not done an official interview. Now, yes, um, her and Sean Stockman from Boys and Men have had back and, uh, back and forth on Twitter. She's also done a reality show. She didn't get a chance to really spill out the details, you know what I'm saying? And so this is the first time that she's actually put the entire story into context, okay? And she's did it exclusively for us. And not only has she done it exclusively for us in this interview that you're about to watch, okay? She is going to be available on the app after the show, TashaKLive.com, to take your questions, okay? You can ask her anything that you want as long as you ain't dragging this woman over something that happened that, that, that done happened years ago, okay? Now, you could be respectful but she will be available at 10 p.m eastern standard time on my live stream which is 7 p.m i I believe pacific standard standard time because she's in la you know what i'm saying to answer all of your questions right after this live stream now before we get it popping me and my husband have almost finished this mango moscato by sweet bitch okay this tastes just like mango squeezed in a glass all right i love it because it's perfect for the weather. You know what I'm saying? You know what's hot now in Atlanta? Shout out to Hot Atlanta. You know, it's not Atlanta where I'm at. <laughs> Gwinnett is not Atlanta. <laughs> so shit, Snellville is not Atlanta. All right, so shout out to Hot Atlanta. Um, ooh. It's hot. It goes with pretty much any occasion, especially brunches. Tastes just like a sangria in a glass. If you want to add some vodka to it, feel free, okay? And so... All you got to do is uh, use your search browser and uh, Google Sweet Bitch, of course, if you are going to be coming to our venue that I will put the date out for. Check. Check. Did you do what you were supposed to do? No. Oh, 
So y'all can't drag me no more. Y'all got to drag Shake. I done done my part, okay? But we do have the venue set, okay? But we will be releasing the date here, and I promise we'll get it out by tomorrow. I'm not going to lie to you. We'll get the RSVP out by tomorrow. Jasmine will work on it so they can go ahead and RSVP. But the app is going to have it first, okay? And so um, I think that's it thus far. Anything I need to say? No? Okay, so I'm going to come back here after the interview leaves, so don't leave, okay? I got some information I want to share with you, right? But then after I come back, I'm going to send everybody over to the app, TashaKLive.com. It's in the description box. You do have to sign up via the website first, okay? You have to subscribe there. Then you can download your app on the Apple Store as well as the Google Play Store, and you can get it popping with us, okay, and Miss Avanti Wright, all right? And without further ado... All the we go to the end of the road. Still, I can't let you go. It's so natural. You belong to me. I belong to you. Let's go, Jasper. Let's go. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot. The olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order, or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. AdamandEve.com. I'm talking toys, bondage, lingerie, and so much more. Plus, they have 24-7 customer service, so you can order at 3 a.m. if you ain't coming, if you get me, okay? And if something isn't working out, you can send it back within 90 days, no hassle. And if that's not enough, you can also take pleasure in knowing that 20% of their profits goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So go on ahead and log on to AdamandEve.com. Use the code Tasha. K for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply now, but hurry up and visit adamandeve.com so they can make you come. Come here, you sweet bitch. I just love you so much and you will too. Wino Sweet Bitch Wine is the champion of the Moscato game. If you like sweet, fruity, dessert tasting wines with a little sparkle, then get your sparkle on with Sweet Bitch Wines. Oh, and don't think they just stop at Moscato. They also have other options like Chardonnay and Pinot Grigio. There is something for everyone, so don't be a salty bitch. Go check them out on Instagram at Sweet Bitch Wines for recipes or just to learn more. I promise you, you'll love it, you sweet bitch. Oh, man, we have a legend in the building. Hi, Tash. Oh, my, I, I just wish every, hello, sorry. I'm just so excited because I just wish every Instagram model <laughs> that thinks they're a model, mm -hmm. like, you need to be giving, like, live classes on how to do this shit, how to really do it without getting shitted on, pissed on. They are doing that. And having to go back for surgery after surgery just to keep it up. The game has changed. It's changed. Avanti Wright, okay? Actress, model. Mm -hmm. You are one of the first, okay? The first. So if anyone want to check the stats. Check the they stats. They out there, okay? The first urban swimsuit cinephile model yes. to do it. Night, You had the 90s on lock and you had the 2000s on lock. I sure did. And there's nobody that you probably haven't worked with. Um, Yeah, probably in the 90s though. In the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> in the 90s, okay. Yeah. Now, a lot of people were like, you know, because you had mentioned Melissa Ford before we started this interview. Uh-huh. And like, you are the reason Melissa Ford has a job. Right. But I, I do give them credit because okay. where I left off, they went, they, I gave them the, bat the baton and they mm -hmm. ran with that like nobody's business. So, you know, I do give them credit for how they handled it back then. Okay. Okay. I Listen, and I know I, there's so many interviews and I was just telling you that there's so many <laughs> interviews that I could do with you. Oh, I know. It because all. it's like, it <laughs> blocks. It's like, we well, have a legend in the building that knows everybody's business. Now, I know some of the, the, the legendary celebrities going to watch this and going to be like, I hope she ain't going to say shit. Data, I know where the skeleton Data, is. Data, you know. <laughs> I know where to go. Barry, I know where to go. Why bottoms up? I, I got to fill up your glass. Here, let me fill up your glass now. I know where they buried the, that. The reason we're here, let me see your glass real oh, quick. Okay, the sure. reason we're here is because we met 
under unexpected circumstances, right, right. okay? Mm -hmm. I did an interview with Ariane Curry. Correct. Okay. That interview went viral. Um, she was the mistress to Martel Holt, mm -hmm. Love and Marriage Huntsville star. Mm -hmm. um, she's had words with the wife, Melody. Uh, and so it's it's been a messy, messy journey. Se mm -hmm. uh, seven years, I want to say. There is a baby. Okay. You said that interview triggered you. It did trigger me. And I think it more so triggered me because her being a mistress and the, the vitriol that she had towards the wife. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I was screaming at that interview, like, Tasha, you better get, you gonna let her get away with that. I was really so angry because I just felt like at, because I was a mistress. So I was coming from both sides. So mm. I understood the wife. Like I have a heart. So I understood where the wife was coming from. And I understood where she was coming from as a mistress. Because these guys or these men mm -hmm. that date us, I know <laughs> what it's like when they tell us everything we want to hear. You weren't just, I, I don't want to call you a mistress, okay? okay? Now I call Ariana mistress because that's what she was. Mm -hmm. Seven years, you have a baby, you're sharing a husband. The wife knows who you are. She's always known. There's obviously been some type of understanding. He mm -hmm. was able to keep it going for as long as he did. And But with your situation, you weren't a mistress. You were a spiritual wife. And not just a spiritual <laughs> wife. Listen, I, I got to get the wine. Because when you said it, listen, when you, when you told me, my mouth dropped. Because I was like, you were. Now, I'm sure a lot of the OGs know. A lot of the OG bloggers and right, stuff when they, they see this. But know. to my winos. Avanti Wright, okay, first urban legendary swimsuit centerfold. And you were a spiritual wife to Boys the Men's. Sean Stockman. I'm like a groupie. I'm like a groupie. I shouldn't yes. be screaming. Now, um, and it wasn't, it wasn't like, like a short relationship. You were with him before. His, he, his he married. Actually, he called Sharonda. me. Yeah, he called me from the wedding. So we were getting into a spiritual, we were going through a spiritual journey at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was actually engaged before I decided to leave my fiance and, you know, dive into that journey with him. Um, we were going through a spiritual journey. And so he called me from the the wedding and was like, are you going to be okay with this? From and the was, wedding? From the wedding. Not before the wedding. Not before the wedding. Well, it was at the wedding. He, You know how the guys go. Yes. So and so he got wedding. you like, it, so you know how the pastor asked a question, does anybody have any objections to this this matrimony. Mm -hmm. And so he called you um, before, <laughs> or, 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 or right, maybe when right the pastor said, is there any like, objection? Wait a minute, let me make sure. <laughs> she ain't going to object. Yeah. He calls me just to make sure, because we were definitely going through that journey together. So he called me and he was like, are you going to be okay with this? And I said, absolutely. Go marry your wife. <gasps> I sure did. I was, I was really okay with it. Now, how old were you? How old were you when you started dating? I, I was younger, Sean. and it's weird because I'm in the entertainment business. So yeah. when people ask me how old I was, I used to lie so much that I don't even remember the ages. <laughs> and I think we were talking about that earlier. I was yes. like, how, when did such and such? Because that's yeah. when I I was. It was. It was. I was younger. I okay, was like in my twenties. Okay, okay. And his wife Sharonda, whom mm -hmm. he is still married He's to, still married to her. Um, they are photographed together <laughs> in the airport, taking trips. Beautiful couple. Beautiful couple. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, you know, family. Yes. And um, when you see that now, like, and you know that you were a part of the journey before they became married, and then while they were married for a very long time. Like I said, you weren't a mistress. You were a spiritual wife because you, you married him spiritually right. under the Israelite faith. Yes. faith. So they were together for a long time, but okay. they didn't get married. So I think they were getting married and then they broke off the wedding and then they eventually got married. So okay. when I was with him, he was still with her for a long time because mm. she started working. Well, she used to be their stylist for boys to men. So that's where she kind of came from. She was. Boys and Men stylist. Now, how did you come to know Sean? Did you know him before he joined I, Boys and Men? <laughs> no. So I met Sean through Michael Bass McCary, which is the the deep voice. Okay. Oh, another story. But I met Sean. No, we never dated or anything. No, no, no. I, I met Sean okay. through Michael McCary. 
And um, one of the big producers, I mean, like, tour producers back then, his name was Big West. Okay. He invited me to, like, a Boys to Men concert. So I already knew Michael. And when I went backstage, that's where I met the rest of the guys. And it was backstage. Big West introduced them to me. Now, what was the first interaction like when you saw Sean? Were you attracted? Yes. This is the crazy thing. I'm crazy. It's crazy that you asked me that. So I met Wanye. It was cool. He was going through his little thing. Um, it was it was a lot. Okay. And then I met Nate. And then Sean walked up to me, and he was so genuine, so nice. And he was like, "Anyone that's a friend of Wes well, is family to me." And I was like, so he had you right there. Yes. And I said that at that time, I said, that's going to be my husband. What? Mm -hmm. I was like, that's going to be my husband. So you didn't know at the time when you first met him that he was engaged. Oh, he wasn't engaged then. Okay. So we've been friends for a long time oh. before we started the relationship. Because when I met him, I was like, that's going to be my husband. I talked to one of his, well, his bodyguard at the time, Rhythm. So each one of the guys had their own bodyguard. Mm. Rhythm was Sean's. So I talked to Rhythm and everybody liked me. They was like, Vonta, you cool. You know, you 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 low key. Yeah. You ain't like the rest, whoever the rest is. And um, But Rhythm was like, he's never going to like you. You too dark for him. What? That's what, he, that's what he said. Sean never said that he said that but that's what rhythm said okay me. and i was like it kind of crushed me so i was like okay well it's cool you know brush it off yeah I'm sorry brush it off and i just i just you know laid back and i wasn't really tripping and then i started doing my thing and then that's probably when he seen me so how long after you had that initial and you know he grabbed you um and you know he had you at hello. He had me at hello. That's a <laughs> now he didn't come off the he didn't come off the stage thinking because you know he has a voice now. Yeah, and he, he hit the high notes on the group now. So uh -huh. yeah. Um, so did you hear him? And then he come off backstage and he was just like, "Wow, so your music kind of matches." Well, I wasn't a Boyz II Men <clears throat> fan. Oh, so I was more of a joke. I'm from Florida. Okay, so I'm from Florida I, yeah. too. Okay, so I'm more of a like they was too. You know the the bow ties and like. That just didn't turn me on. I, okay. I liked it a little rougher. So okay. I, when I when I was invited to the concert, okay. I wasn't really like, oh my God, boys and men. I mm -hmm. was just like, damn, Jodeci ain't in town, is it? You, know <laughs> you like Jodeci? Yeah, I was like, okay. I, I wanted the little, you know, the rough, yes. rough and tough. Okay. Kinda. So I wasn't a fan of boys and men like okay. that until I met them. And then I was like... Oh, I like Sean Okay. out of all of them. And everyone was like, Sean. I know. I'm like Sean. <laughs> Like <laughs> but it was something about his energy that I, I really, and it was very sweet and it was very kind. Mm. And that's what turned me on. And he never pursued you? At that time, not really, no. Okay. So what made him like, I guess all of a sudden change his mind and, and finally see you? Well, we were friends. And okay. then um, I did the cover of Magazine. I did the cover of Black Men. That was 98. Okay. Very, and, and we're going to show a picture of that so <laughs> people know who we talk about. Because you had all the black men. Even my daddy and them like, damn, who is that? Yes. Yeah. So. so I did the cover of Black Men. Okay. And um, Rhythm. I had talked to Rhythm. I don't I don't know how I got. I talked to Rhythm. He was like, yo, do you mind? We were just, we seen you when mm -hmm. we went to the store. And we were like, wow, look at Avante. Will you mind if I give Sean your information? I said, oh, of course not. And then me and Sean, I was engaged at the time, and me and Sean just, we start talking like every day. And then every day ended up being four or five times like a day, and then we were talking hours. What kind of things were you guys talking about for hours? Just, well, at the time, and I, and this is where I went wrong. Okay. Because I was engaged. Okay. And I was having issues with my fiance at the time. And so he was someone that I could confide in okay. and that I trusted. And mm. so, you know, being a man, he's like, you deserve better than that. Oh. <laughs> so, so I was like, you're right. I need, I deserve better. <laughs> and so that's when he introduced me because Wanye at the time was a general mm. in the Israelite faith. So he was a general. And um, they introduced me to the Israelites. And I kind of liked the way they taught. 
Yeah, them Islamites, they, they mean business. They I went mean to, business. I went to one of their uh, <laughs> meetings before. They almost had me, and I had to, I was like, hold up now, wait a minute. Wait right. a minute. Right. You know, especially right. when they start talking about Yahweh and Israel and uh, uh, Inman, you oh, all. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Inman. God is in you, and you like sitting there, and I'm like, oh, okay, he and me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so they had me. Yeah. They had me, too. Wow. And, um being that I was with Sean, of course, I probably was treated a little different than everybody else. Why? Because, you know, they were a celebrity, you know, and it was Sean and Wanye. And um, we were from L.A., so I didn't have to go to, like, all of the schools. So I didn't see them, like, screaming at, you know, folks on the streets and stuff. So I wasn't a part of that. Mm. So I was just really a part of, like, the teachings. And I was able to, like, talk to, like, the apostles, the big high guys at the time, I think his name was Taz Dakia. Mm. And so I was I was able to Shout like, out to Taz Dakia. I think he's passed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From the grave. Let me pour out a little wine for Taz Dakia. <laughs> I'm not laughing at him like he ain't with God because God is in him. You understand? Right. Go ahead. Listen. Yes, yeah, so okay. that's how I got involved mm-hmm. in the Israelite is through well, Sean got involved through Wanye, and then I got involved through Sean. Yeah, because one game, I, you know, I've kind of heard, you know, rumors here and there about, you know, his extra marital deal. Is not, he's not married anymore. Mm-hmm. He's still married? Not the toy, though. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> 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 we're, here, we're, here <laughs> we're here for Sean today. We're here for Sean. What's going on? No, okay, I, hold on I... for a second. Hold on. Can you have one? back. Okay. Yeah, we can still talk. When, when oh, she okay. come in, you know, Jasmine, just walk on in. You know, okay. I like to keep it natural. Uh-huh. So, um, so you, 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 he introduces you to the faith. Of course, mm-hmm. I'm sure you guys bond on a spiritual level. Yes, we bonded completely on the spiritual level. Okay. Yeah, I, I've read some of the emails, and they were extremely spiritual. Yes. I'm, I'm talking about like. I don't I don't think you could have ever been mad at him without feeling like you were portraying God or somebody like that's, that's how exactly strong how that went. Yes. So <laughs> it, I mean, the, he had a, a hold on me spiritually. Damn. And um, yeah, so everything, every argument mm-hmm. had counsel, mm. every, you know, disagreement had counsel. Okay. I had to surround myself by other Israelite women. Unless it was work related, and um, I stopped kind of doing a lot of the entertainment stuff because I was more focused on, you know, getting out of the world and into the spiritual realm. So you stopped your career because these heifers need a teacher out here today. You understand? <laughs> so you stopped your career uh-huh. for some dick. Well, it wasn't when you the look penis. back on it, was it some dick? <laughs> it was <laughs> <laughs> it was spirituality, but yes. Okay. For some dick, I did. Okay, yes. okay. Good dick, maybe. I Good mean, dick, maybe. Yeah, it was so It was a spiritual dick. It's different. <laughs> it does be different. I know, I know. Now, it feels different. Now, um, let, let's, okay, now, so you guys are talking. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, he wasn't, when you guys started talking, married to his wasn't married. current wife, whom he is still married He's to still right married now, to Sharonda him. Stockman. Yes. Um, who you said was the personal stylist. At the beginning, yeah. At the beginning. She, she was voice and stylist. And she retired. Yeah. And she, she's married. I feel you. <laughs> she <Listen>. upgraded. <laughs> I feel you. Um, and so, of course, you're, um, you're conversing with him. You're building a relationship on a very deep level. Mm-hmm. Now, were you, before she married Sean, did you spiritually marry him first? No. Or did, okay. I did not. So, and this is where I think he probably got me because we didn't have sex for the first year and a half. Oh, wow. We did a lot, but we didn't have intercourse because we really w- was taking the spiritual side of this mm-hmm. very serious. And he was really getting into it. Like we both were like, you know, mm-hmm. kids getting into something new. So we were trying to do it the right way. So we didn't have sex for the first year and a half. And then once we have sex is when we become one. Was he having sex with his fiance at the time, his wife? I'm sure he was, but she wasn't in the the religion. So she was, I, I. So he had two question. sides to him. He had in the world, Sean. Yes. In, in the face. So he fucked in the world. 
And he didn't in the faith. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, Sean. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, um, <laughs> listen. Um, and so. All right, so you guys are building deep. Uh, he's engaged. Now, how long after you guys, you know, you get serious until he calls you one day and says, I'm marrying Sharonda. Are you okay with this? Well, I knew he was getting married because I was engaged. Okay. So okay. I knew they were getting married. And I kind of, we didn't talk about it that much until it was like right around the corner. And um, he did call me from the wedding and was like, are you going to be okay with this? Because we were building into that spiritual realm. And I said, yes, go marry your wife. What made you say that? Because I was okay with it. I was spiritually okay with that. And I'm, I am I mean, different strokes for different folks. And I wasn't really a jealous person. So my, we had an agreement before we got into relationship. And my agreement with him was, I want to know the truth. I want to know what I'm getting into. So... We need to talk. So you appreciated his honesty. Yes. I tell I tell men that all the time. You ain't never got to cheat as long as you You're be honest. honest with your wife or your mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. She will respect you more. She would definitely. Re and I did respect him because he was extremely honest with me. When there were other women, he made sure that he he, he brought them, you know, into, into and he brought them to me. Like he definitely. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We wait. talked about it. Wait, so you, look, grab your yeah, wallet. Because you wanted to grab it. You, like, like, wait you did like this. You said this. <laughs> so he's married to Sharonda over here, spiritually building with you. And then mm -hmm. other women he would meet, of course, being Sean Stocker, mm -hmm. Boys the Men, one of the biggest R&B groups of all time, right. um, would meet women and bring them to you and ask you for permission. Mm -hmm. To lay with them. Yes. Well, he wouldn't lay with anybody unless he was thinking about making them a part of our union. How many spiritual wives were there with you guys? Well, there was one particular woman that we ended up having an argument with. Well, I ended up having an argument argument with. Um, so there was only one other woman that he really wanted to, you know, take it there with. That I know about. Okay. Did you, did you guys, were you together? Was this like a polyamorous relationship? No, we never, like, it wasn't that type of party. Okay. I was asking because <laughs> I was like. So it wasn't that type of party. Okay. So the way I worked it is, it was, you know, me and Sean had our business. And as long as he agreed to making me happy under the terms that I set, I didn't worry about what he was doing outside. What were the terms? Long. The terms was, listen, there was things that, like, you had to okay. contact me every day. Okay. You know, I ain't playing that. You you got to make sure I'm good. Um, you have to be honest. Okay. Um, just, just staying in connect with my emotional being. Like, if something happens, I need you. Because he was traveling gotta, a lot. Yeah. Okay. You have to make sure you're always there for me. And now, did he take care of you financially? No, he wasn't financially well off at that time. Oh. It was a lot going on with the, the boys and men crew at that time. Oh. Well, looks can be deceiving. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, the industry, I'm sure yeah. you've heard about the industry, mm. and it looks like everybody has TLC, they get $50,000 exactly. out there tour. So, it was Damn. a lot going on. They were losing Stone Mountain, and it was just a lot. Okay. Stone Mountain was the... um. At the studio that they had. Okay. So it was just a lot going on. So he wasn't really financially set at that time. So it wasn't all about the money. Okay. So you were you were with him. I was with him. Well, and ride I, or die. I had probably I was financially doing my thing at the time. Now what what was your fiance? What what was he at doing all this? Doing all what? You you got this going on with Sean and you managing the women that he got going on. <laughs> you know about the wife, like what what um was my fiance doing? Yeah. You know, at, before I got into any type of relationship with Sean, when I start feeling like I really like him, I couldn't wait for him to call me. I broke off my relationship with my fiance. I wasn't going to do that to him. I didn't want to be a person that I despised him. You know, I didn't want to cheat on him. Yeah. I didn't want to do that. So now we, we listen, I ain't going to say your fiance name. Mm -hmm. We said we weren't going to do that. <laughs> but girl, you listen, it had to be some strong spiritual dick. <laughs> For you to lead that man, because he was he was he was a big deal. Yeah, he was a big deal, and we're still friends to this day. And 
he's an amazing person. Like he was a big deal. And that's why I don't say his name. Because, yeah. You know, we're still friends even after that. And so he I, found out about no, he Sean eventually. He eventually through probably the television show, the VH1 show that I did. Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't know. He had he he was like, you guys are friends, but he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know why I left. So I guess hi. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, thank you, Jasmine. Thank you. Hold on, that. Listen, I'm sorry, fiance. I'm yeah, s- it's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, fiance. Listen, I mean, he's seen talk- he's seen the the reality show that I did, and we what did he say? To, um, he was hurt, and he he's cool as heck. Yeah. So we just laughed about it. You know, and because it was like years. Yeah, passed. it was years has passed. He okay. got another fiance. So, OK, you know, I I knew he loved me. So that was probably the, the hardest part of it. But, um, yeah. OK. Um. So back to Sean. So I guess how long before you were friends, before you decided to spiritually marry him after he called you from the wedding? And asked you permission to marry his now current wife, Sharonda. And before you answer that question, I don't know how I would feel being married to my husband, knowing that he had to ask another bitch to marry me. And I'm not calling, I'm not calling you a bitch. I'm just saying, like, as a wife, like, well, he didn't ask me to marry her. He well, he asked, asked how, me if I was okay with it and moving forward. So he was just checking in on me as. A woman like Avante, this is about to happen. Are you going to be okay? So what if you would have said no? He would have just been, we probably can't do it then because he was going to get married. And why do you think he was so gung-ho about getting married, but yet he was spiritually in love with you in the spiritual realm, but he was in love with her in a worldly realm? Because I think you can love two people at one time. Okay. I mean, I, I, I agree. I, I feel that. like I was more of the homegirl. Like, he can tell anything to. He can, like, we talk about everything. And she was more of the, you been not look at nobody's booty. And you been not do this. And you, he, she was a little bit more, mm-hmm. you know, firm with a lot of things. So he couldn't really be completely himself with her. Do you think he was insecure with you? What you mean? Because, like, you know how, you know, and I'm not saying Sharonda is ugly or anything like that. I think she's, she's a very beautiful, yeah. beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. But as far as when you meet a, a insecure woman, I think it makes men a little bit more safer as opposed to a, a woman who's totally confident in being herself. She's one of the top urban, uh, uh, you know, uh, centerfolds mm-hmm. here. And she don't need you. Right. But she wants you. Right. I don't think Sharonda was insecure. I honestly don't think that she was insecure at all. I just think she, he liked the fact that she was so motherly. Like she was, she wanted kids. She wanted to stay at home. You she didn't wanted, want to, you didn't want kids? You didn't want any of those things? I never, th- I, I was always like, if it happens, I'll, you know, I'll be a great mother. I went to school for child psychology, but I'm not, it, a man or anything else defines me as a woman. So... I was always like, if it happens, I'm going to be blessed and I'm going to take it. But I never was like, if I don't have kids, you know, I was never that type of woman. From I guess from listening to your story, I would say he probably was a little insecure because I'm telling you, when men feel that women don't need them, mm-hmm. they don't want to be there. They don't feel safe. They don't feel secure. Okay. Not to say that. Right. Um, you're not someone that he can trust. But when a man is insecure, it bothers him when a woman is just so comfortable being who she is and she doesn't need all these things like you said it wasn't about the money Mm-mm. it was about him and I, I think that he wanted something just a little bit more predictable like right. easy oh, I can see that you see what I'm mm-hmm. saying I can see that yeah like that way he ain't be, you know like Are you you dating Avanti I mean you know all these men after her and I'm not saying a lot of men were after Sharonda because she was kind of behind the scenes but you were you I were was out there. You yeah. was out there. Not yeah. not saying out there in uh, oh yeah today's yeah. terms, <laughs> right? But, <laughs> Let's you know, clarify that. <laughs> you know, he had to deal with you know his homies. Like damn, like that's right. you. You know, mm-hmm. so I understand that. But so you guys, how how long into I guess the relationship after he married Sharonda, did you got did he decide to spiritually marry you and commit to you? I would say it was a problem. It was probably about. 
a year after that happened. With his wife? Yeah. Because we were still kind of trying to feel it out. And we actually did not. Ha- we did a lot. Just a no lot. no penetration? No penetration. Okay. And no oral or anything like that either. Okay. So it was a lot of heavy kissing, rubbing, and doing all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, so what was the spiritual ceremony like? We We didn't really have... The spiritual ceremony <laughs> was a lot of uh, uh, Janet Jackson, some wine, a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I said? We played them slow songs and we were like, are you ready? We're going to do this. So it was more of that. And then so once, once you guys, I guess, had, had sex, sex, that's when we were spiritually combined. And then when I start going to the Passovers and stuff like that, and then I, I met the apostles, that's when they completely was like, okay, you know, this is your spiritual wife. So he had to, to, to act right. Yeah. And the, and the faith was okay with that? Well, the faith is okay with, that's their faith. That they can have multiple wives. But don't the wives have to be on one accord? Well, you might need to, <laughs> <laughs> you to dig up top Don't, here, don't the wives got to be on the same accord? I don't think. I think what it was is everybody. The the man is the the um the king of that household. So, you know, he, you let him handle that. Mm. You know what I'm so saying? So you play your position. You play your position, and you let him handle that. And I was cool with that because I didn't want to deal with it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I stay focused in my in my world. Now, here's the question. How long until you guys seeing each other? And I'm sure you... Did you ever have passings with his wife? Did she know you before you and, and her husband started sleeping together? She probably seen me around because I, I knew the guys, but she probably didn't know who I was because I wasn't like a fixture in their lives. Okay. But I was, I knew the guys, like I knew Mike and I knew, okay. you know, so it was always, what's up Avante? Give me a hug, yeah. you know, but I was never around. Like I wasn't trying to just hang out with the boys. Mm. To me. And so she never, like, I guess how long into you guys sleeping together? And once you made that, that spiritual covenant and he already made another covenant with his wife, did she find out, finally find out it's I, her? I think she finally found out when I left the information at her door after nine years or eight years. You savage. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. What what information did you leave at Mrs. Stockton's door? So what happened with that night was, um, or with what happened leading up to that, it was about a year. I was so unhappy. Okay. Why were you unhappy? And um, because he was doing things that we didn't agree to. So you were happy all the eight years that you guys like were together? Six, seven years. And then okay. like the last year or so, I wasn't happy because I was starting to find out some of the things that he was doing behind my back. Like what? Um, Like there was a one, one incident, <laughs> I think that turned it all around, was it was a friend of mine's. And she happens to be the the daughter of a a legend, a real legend. Okay. A for real legend. Okay. And um, I knew that when they were younger, she um, he had a crush on her. Okay. And her father, who's the legend, was like, "You better not talk to that ugly little boy or whatever it was that he said." <laughs> okay. Um. And years later, now he's boys to men. We were friends, me and this young lady. And um, she went to his concert. Oh. And behind the scenes, she went down on him. Oh. And I and found she's out. somebody legendary daughter. Y- going down on married men. 
<laughs> twice over. On the stage. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm going to have to ask you who that is later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to be shocked. I'm going to ask you, out. who was giving a married man and she's a daughter to a legend? Yeah. Hey, she, you're child gonna of 90s in the 2000s was lit. <laughs> she was, <laughs> so she, um, okay. so I found out okay. because I start putting two and two together. Okay. So I talked to her and okay. I was like, oh, so what happened? And mm-hmm. she was just kind of stuttering. Mm-hmm. And then he finally broke down and told me what happened. So he did tell me. He was the one who explained to me what happened. And it broke me. And then from that point, because we're supposed to be going on this spiritual journey, I'm okay with certain things, but if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. Okay. You know, so, so you just wanted him to tell you. I just wanted I wanted him to be honest, but I also didn't want if you was going to be worldly, then we going to be worldly. Like okay. we're not going to play both. You know, you got the wife. I understand that. But that's it as far as the world. So if you're going to if you're interested in another woman, mm-hmm. you better make sure it's right. And you better make sure it's right spiritually. Within the faith, not just out here, you know, slanging. Because if you're slinging, I might as well be her. And I ain't trying to be her, the wife. Oh, come here, you sweet bitch. I just love you so much and you will too. Wino Sweet Bitch Wine is a champion of the Moscato game. If you like sweet, fruity, dessert tasting wines with a little sparkle, then get your sparkle on with Sweet Bitch Wines. Oh, and don't think they just stop at Moscato. They also have other options like Chardonnay and Pinot Grigio. There is something for everyone, so don't be a salty bitch. Go check them out on Instagram at Sweet Bitch Wines for recipes or just to learn more. I promise you, you'll love it, you sweet bitch. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and it has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. AdamandEve.com. I'm talking toys, bondage, lingerie, and so much more. Plus, they have 24-7 customer service so you can order at 3 a.m. if you ain't coming, if you get me, okay? And if something isn't working out, you can send it back within 90 days, no hassle. And if that's not enough, you can also take pleasure in knowing that 20% of their profits goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So go on ahead and log on to AdamandEve.com. Use the code Tasha K for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply now, but hurry up and visit Adam adamandeve.com so they can make you come you know so what, <laughs> what's the difference breaking I, I, I know your mind frame is very different now and uh-huh. that's the reason why we're here but what did you mean be her the wife well her the wife is she didn't even know her husband mm. I felt like I knew her husband more than she knew her husband because he can be honest with her he could be honest with me And so for me, I was like, listen, I ain't trying to be that. I don't want no man that I, that can't be honest with me. Okay. So when I start finding out these little, like this little information of him doing this and him doing that, I'm like, yo, what, what is going on? This is not what we agreed to. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I mean by I, I'm I'm not trying to be her because I don't want to do that's lying. If you're going to do it. I'm giving you the cake. I give you the cake. You got to either eat it <laughs> or go on a diet. You know what I'm saying? Like you, I'm, I'm with you on this journey. So you can be honest to me. If you see somebody that you are interested in and you want to rock that way, then make it right. Now, were you allowed to see other people? No. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> See what I'm talking about? That, that's just that's just insecurity on a whole other <laughs> level. He can do it, but you can't do it. No. And why was that? Is it because of the faith? It's the faith. Yes. Okay. So the man can have more than one wife. The wife can have her man that has more than one wife. Okay. I don't agree with that, <laughs> but okay. Yes, yeah, so I was very I told him because, you know, my husband, he comes from the Muslim faith. I said, listen, if you can have multiple... I can have no <laughs> Yeah. He was like, no, you ain't. I was like, well, then, what are we doing? Like, no, but, um. And I didn't need it. Yeah. I, didn't, I wasn't, I'm not that type of girl. Like, 
I'm I'm very sapio, so I'm very connected to like you know yeah. energy or whatever, and yeah. I don't give that energy to everybody. Yeah. So, okay, so two years, six years, you guys are good. He's between you and the wife. Mm -hmm. Of course, the wife didn't know about nope. you. So, what did he? What kind of things would he say to his wife to come see you? Well, I he was on he was on tour at this time. Oh, so I was I was a you were touring wife. with him. Yes, I was always there. I was I was in Japan. I was in all of these cities with him. And yeah. his wife was at home with the babies. And his wife was at home. How boring. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to be her. Uh, uh, ain't no way. I'm packing these children up. Get your bags. Get in the car. Yeah. Get on the jet. Ain't no way. Yeah. I was traveling. Everywhere. A lot, yeah, mostly everywhere. And you said that, like, you know, in some of the, it was a lot of emails that you forwarded. And that's over. only, like, five. <laughs> yeah, it's five. I had hundreds you of emails. You knew his schedule, mm -hmm. like, where he was. Yes, I knew everything. Uh, I, this is a lot. I, I mean, I knew a lot of the schedule also because I got to choose when I was available to go. Okay. You know, so. So know. did he ever talk to the wife while he was with you? Yeah, he talked to her. And you didn't mind? You no, just, I didn't mind. You just got quiet while he handled his business? I started doing something else. I, I, I Sometimes he'll get an extra room, mm -hmm. you know, just to make sure I'm comfortable so I didn't have to hear certain things. You know, and he'll just go to the room when she calls and then come back to the room when they're finished. And then sometimes I'll just, you know, go downstairs because I did respect mm -hmm. that situation. So I I didn't have I wasn't like, why are you talking to her all the time? Like I I know the men watching this are like, where can we get <laughs> That right <laughs> yeah. now, like, yeah, I, I respected. I definitely respected the relationship because I was really in it for from a spiritual level. Okay, so I respected the relationship, and I was like, you know, I don't want her to feel any type of way. Happy life, happy wife. Right. You know what I'm saying? Soon as she start shaking the table, it's gonna bring our problems because now she's gonna, you know, be questioning. And as long as she's okay and she's happy and she doesn't know anything is going on. We can live our... Did you ever get jealous? No. Never got jealous of her. I never really got jealous of any of them. See, that's... I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that shit bothered him. Because he was like, you don't get jealous? No. <sighs> I mean, I was I was very content in who I am. Okay. So I was... I didn't want... I didn't want to be nobody but me. So I didn't want to be her. The okay. <laughs> the so, all right. So you guys are traveling together. Yes. Okay. At this time, when he started to make money, did he start to take care of you financially? I mean, he, he never really took care of me financially because I always had my own. I was okay. always, even with my ex, mm -hmm. I always had money saved up. I always had a business. I always was able to make money. So he never took, I mean, I got a lot of trips. I got diamond rings. I got like, you know, jewelry and purses and stuff like that. But so you actually had a ring that you wore to say that you were married. Yeah. I had a ring. Okay. How many carrots? <laughs> I'll be a messy today. How many carrots? I don't know. It was nice though. It was, it was a nice, nice ring. Okay. Yeah. And you said rings. Well, he used to buy me jewelry. He'll okay. buy me purses. Okay. You know, he'll do certain things, you okay. know, just as a, a wife. But he didn't he never like paid rent or anything like that. No. Okay. But I always had that. But you always you were always with yeah, him. Yeah, so. so I never he never had to worry about me. And I think that's what made him so comfortable with me, because he never had to worry about me. If he ever didn't have money, I'll be like, don't worry about it. I got it. What? Mm -hmm. Sean Stockton from Boys to Men didn't have no money. Well, it was it was a time where he was losing his house, and Damn. you know what I'm saying. So I don't want to put the <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. So he's losing the house. So he was what? moving from yeah from a house into a condo with the wife, with the wife, and the kids, and the kids, and you paid. <laughs> the house to get out of I foreclosure? Didn't, no, no, I didn't pay anything for him. He took care of that because then she would know. Okay. But what I'm saying is that he never had to pay for anything for me. But if he didn't have anything or I knew he was going through that situation, I'll pay for like the food or I'll pay for the, the 
the flight, I'll pay for all of that. I'm telling you, the men are like, where can we get a center phone <laughs> that's beautiful, <laughs> that's independent, yeah. and she don't ask no motherfucking questions? I didn't ask questions. I, I understood that he was going through that. So I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll pay for the flight this time. I'll pay for this this time. Damn. Mm -hmm. And he didn't mind. I mean, it didn't like know, hit his ego. You know how most men are like, nah, 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 we ain't gonna go nowhere then. No, because yeah. we were so, like, and it's hard to explain how close we were. Okay. We were really good friends first. Like, we started off as being really good friends. Okay. First. So you guys were like best friends. Yeah, we much. were like best okay. of friends. And then we were going on this journey together. Okay. So we kind of understood each other. Okay, so, um, <laughs> How so nine years mm -hmm. you leave a box at the door to let his wife know now? Um, how, how where did you get this idea to leave a box to let her know after nine years? Well, it's actually more because nine years you guys were together, but you guys known each yeah. other for a lot longer, and she gets this box at her front door. Like, how what, what was going through your mind? No, so what was happening is the the year the year before that a lot was going on he was okay. it was a lot of cheating it was a lot of other women that i was finding out through people that were close to him okay and they liked me so they was like avante you deserve better than this mm. da, 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 da. and these are people that mm. you know were close to him mm -hmm. and so every time we get into an argument about whatever i used to have to go through counseling you know because of the religion so it was like, you're supposed to, you know, obey your man and do all of this. But I was so depressed. Mm. I was like severely depressed. And I woke up one day and was like, I have to burn the bridge down. <gasps> and the only way I can burn the bridge down is go to the beginning of the bridge. Right. So. I knew I had to do something drastic because if it was just arguments and I'm like, I'm leaving. He'll call me and I'll be like, okay. Yeah. And so I said, I got to burn the bridge down. And so he was going to Japan and he called me and um, I said, I love you. He said he loved me. And he was like, my flight is about to leave. I said, okay, have a safe flight. And I drove to her house and I left the box. And she saw the box. Well, she wouldn't have saw the box. She wouldn't have seen the box. I left the box and then I texted her. I don't know how I got her number, okay. but I texted her and I told her that the box was in front of the house because they were living in a condo at the time. So, you know. You didn't want nobody to come by and take it. No, but I, I didn't think she would ever see it because the garage was underneath. So if you don't go out the front door, you wouldn't see it. So if she was leaving the house and she was going into the car, she might not go to the front door. If you, you understand yeah. what I mean. So, yeah. So now you I said she was her. pregnant at the time. I didn't know. This was where my depression even got more serious okay. because she was pregnant at the time. But he never, ever told me that she was having another. Well, I think it was the girl at this time. She was having a girl. Now, before we get into the contents of the box, <laughs> over the course of the nine years you guys were together, mm -hmm. were you ever pregnant? Yes. Multiple twice. times? Multiple twice? times, like twice. Okay. You terminated those babies? I terminated one and I had a, I miscarried one. At his request? Um, I wouldn't no say kids? that it was his request, but at the time, I knew that wasn't good. You know, I'm like, this ain't good. Okay. So it, I was doing it for him, but he didn't ask me was it because of the financial situation and no or just was, him having a wife with the yeah, all you didn't want to be her like you yeah said. I didn't want to be her okay. I, I just I I wasn't ready I was scared and I didn't want her to find out I didn't want to hurt her I was really thinking like I don't mm -hmm. want to hurt her I like if I have a baby things are going to change so yeah so he never said Avante terminate the pregnancy. So he would have been okay if you would have had the baby. I don't know if he would have been okay. He just never <laughs> said about say terminate the pregnancy. <laughs> Listen, I don't know about all that though. He probably would have been so much taken. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um so okay, I mean I mean that's your choice. I'm, yeah. I'm pro choice, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So 
um, now the box. So you you guys hit a depression. You guys are fighting. You're going through counseling with the Israelite church. He's still out here slanging dick. Slanging it. All across the continent. Slanging it. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. And um, I mean, you didn't ever think that because he, he did do this to his wife that it would ever happen to you? Um, I never thought that. No. Because you were just so understanding yeah i was so understanding and i was and i always made it clear that i didn't want to be that okay. her you know and not in a mean way yeah. but i just wanted my relationships to be more honest and i knew she didn't know what her husband was doing mm. so i knew i didn't want that okay you know and i was yeah so she, you leave the contents at the door. She gets the box. What's in the box? The box. <laughs> the box. So the box had all like hundreds of emails. Okay. Printed out. Okay. It had a video to her. Okay. Of us together. Together doing what? Just nothing sexual. Oh. Okay. Well, it did have a, a picture of his penis, but um. <laughs> yeah, I just had to show that, like, yo, for real, we, okay. you know, so I had the video of us together, like, okay. I think we were in Tokyo and a couple of other, J J Jamaica and all of that stuff, and um, what else was in the box, and the note that I wrote to her, because I really did feel bad, and that's what triggered me with Arion, is mm -hmm. her name, Arian is Curry, because yeah. I just didn't understand how she didn't have compassion for the wife, like, I don't care I knew that our verbal agreement yeah. did not hold up to their written agreement. Right. Like they got marriage certificates mm -hmm. and I understood that. And that's why I was like, Arion, what is you like? I don't care what he told you. They got a written agreement over here. That verbal agreement don't mean nothing to that. Mm. So you need to, you know, know, understand your position. So that's why I think I it triggered me so much because I was like, I didn't understand why she was so mad at the wife. But I also don't know yeah. the ins and outs of their relationship. Right. Let me read this letter. One of the contents of the box <laughs> that you wrote to Sharonda Stockton. Okay, I'm going to just drink. While she was pregnant mm -hmm. um, and you had... You were a second spiritual wife. And so before you go there, okay, she was pregnant. But at that moment, I didn't know. And I would have never left the box there knowing that she was going through that emotional okay. journey. So you said, hi, Sharonda. I'm sending you this letter because I do believe that my progress starts with you and my relationship with Sean. Okay. Now I'm not sure what date this letter was written on. Let me see if the date is not here. Okay. But, um, this was at the nine year mark mm -hmm. and you said, I am asking you for forgiveness for any stress or pain that I may have caused you because my intentions are not that I am very sorry that I have to tell you what your husband has, has been about for the last eight years. Just so that you are clear why I choose to do this is because I can't lie anymore. I was told that I can't get this off my chest or off my spirit and be forgiven unless I tell the truth. Mm -hmm. OK, I hope one day you will forgive me as I try to forgive myself. I've known your husband for over 10 years. Sean, Sean, Sean. <laughs> and I've been in a relationship. I've been in a relationship with him for almost eight most of the folks that are around him consider me to be his other wife. That's also due to the religious beliefs that he believes. That's where and how our relationship started. I will continue to follow what I know to be right and pray that I can be forgiven. Sean taught me and made me believe that what we were doing was the right thing. And if he left you or if you found out, you would leave him broke and take away his kids. So I was scared to say anything because I loved him and I believed in him. He came into my life when I was ready to be loved. And he always made me think that he was the only one that could do that. I, I recently came to an understanding about the truth and who Sean is as I began to rebuild my life correctly. Being involved with a married man is new to me. This is not for anyone but forgiveness from you and for me to be able to get on 
with my life in a correct manner. That was deep. Mm -hmm. And just so you know that there are many different women. I can't continue to ignore what's going on. I feel like a hypocrite if I don't come to you as a woman. Eh, eh, eh. Again, I am extremely sorry to be the one to tell you this. Your husband and I got together before you were even married. Sean and I have been through so much pain together with my recent miscarriage and arguments regarding other women. I sent you a package so you can read through our relationship. He has a secret phone that is under his band's account and several email addresses. And of course, everyone around him is helping him in this sin of lies and betrayal. I know you might be confused with all this information. Sean told me in the beginning that nothing or no one will ever split us up. And I would be like his other wife and I wanted to believe him. <laughs> you have every right to hate me, mm -hmm. but I hope one day you will be able to forgive me and lift any hatred you have, you may have for me. I'm so far off from being perfect, but I'm starting to understand that. And that path starts here. I just want you to understand who Sean really is and the double life that he leads. He lives so easily. I'm not in a position to love him anymore, but, uh, but hopefully you will one day understand why I contacted you and you will realize how very sorry I am. This would be my final step to being free. And as I write this, my tears won't cease. How can I have been so stupid? I also ask myself, I just don't wish this for anyone else. I really do feel like you have the right to know the truth about your husband and that you can make a correct decision regarding you and your family. I'm so sorry, Avanti. Yes, that was the letter. So you were crying writing this. Oh, I was in deep depression. So... If he I need more wine. This is too much. <laughs> As a wife, I felt that. Yeah, I was in a deep depression at the time. Oh, Jesus. And um, I left that letter and I left the video and I wanted her to know that I didn't want him to be able to say, oh, she's a groupie or, oh, she, you know, she wants to be you or whatever. So I left everything. So he had to be honest. How soon did he find out about the box that you left? And he thought Once you guys were on good terms. He thought we were on good terms. Yes. He found out and he did call me when he touched down in, in Tokyo. Japan. <laughs> yes. Damn, so she, she wasn't even, a, how long is the flight from, from LA to Japan? About 22 hours? It's a long time. So woo -hoo, woo. So I'm sure what was happening, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. You good? The yeah. sound is still good, Jasper? Okay. It's good. I'm sure what was happening was she was blowing up his his phone. Mm -hmm. Because when he called me, that's when I found out she was pregnant. Because oh. he said, you put my wife in the hospital. What? And I was like, what? <laughs> no, you put your wife in the hospital. So I was like, what? Was she okay? I mean, she eventually, I mean, you know, she was pregnant. Okay. So, so she, she went into early? No, she didn't go into any early thing, but... She probably was hyperventilating. She probably was going through a lot and it probably was affecting her health at the time, being that she was pregnant. So she was in a, she she went to the hospital. Damn. And I was so angry at him. I was more angry at him that I didn't know she was pregnant because I'm like, I would have never done that if mm -hmm. I knew she was pregnant. I would have just held on for another eight months or whatever it was that she was, you know, going to carry the baby and wait it because I didn't want her to have to suffer for his decisions. And so I guess that conversation was, it was, we can never talk no more. Oh, you know, this is the end of us. I said, that's why I did it. Cause you knew that if you didn't do that, you would still I was go still back, back. I because of the back. secrets. Yeah, the just everything. And he was the only thing that I had at that moment as far as like relationships. I lost a lot of my friends. You, you know. lost your friends because of him? Yeah, because no one under, because before Sean, I'm this young, you know, on magazine covers, everybody, you know, rocks with me. And now I can't go out. I kind of kind of cover myself. You know, I can't really hang out with the homies like I used to because they're from the world. 
you know, so everybody was like, mm -mm. so I pretty, that's why when the young lady contacted me, I understood what she was coming, coming from. So you felt like the only way to break free from him was to tell his wife, blow the house down, blow, burn that bridge down. Mm -hmm. oh, was that the last time y'all spoke? Um, I'm sure he didn't keep his word though, but <laughs> no. So yeah. So he was like, you know, we can't be no more. And da, 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 da. I was like, I know that's why I did it. And then that was the last time we spoke, you know, together. And then I was crying. I was going through depression. I was in fetal position for like two weeks. And then one of my family members called me. She was in the media. She called me and she was like, have you checked Twitter? And I'm like, what's going on on Twitter? Mm -hmm. And she was like, is Sean talking about you? And I was like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then I checked Twitter. And then I seen that he called me the devil. Because basically in the religion, if you leave your husband, you go to hell. So he was like, you basically going to hell. So out of nowhere, let me see if I can find this tweet. Hold on for a second. Yeah, it was a long time ago. So you I know Twitter <laughs> says everything. That's why I be careful of what I tweet. You understand? Because so he um, said you were going. He told me I was going to hell. And I mean, did his wife know that he was talking to you? I'm sure she checked Twitter too. Well, I don't know if she was checking Twitter like that. But he basically said I was going to hell, and I got mad because you know you go through those stages. Yeah. And I was like, what? I'm over here in fetal position trying to. You know, cry this out, and you gonna you gonna man up like that. So I start tweeting back, and people that knew me and knew the situation kind of figured it out. <laughs> like, all right, what's going on with y'all? And that's how the story. Because I know um, at the time, Famous before it was Gossip yeah. in the City, she was a very big blog at the time. Um, I don't know if she. I th yeah, maybe at the time because it, it happened twice. Okay. So he had another situation. And what was I that other situation? So he had another Avante, and I don't call her Avante, but she's a beautiful young lady. Mm -hmm. And um, he was in a relationship with her. Oh, like me, and she basically was me. Mm -hmm. And um, when she found out about the other women, she chose to leave too. But because she was in the same position as me, she contacted me because, of course, I was the most famous situation that he had went through. So she was like, I, I, you're the only one. And I think that's what famous is. Um, OK. OK. Yeah, you're right. You know, and I pretty much. I and I fell for her and then I fell for his wife because she was still there. No, she was leaving him, but she was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know. How did you do it? Whatever the case may be, because she was deeply in love with him and then I fell for his wife I fell for her and I was like don't go public so I went to her I went to him which I thought was him and I te I mean I dm'd him in his Instagram because I didn't have his information anymore and I think his wife seen that oh shit oh shit <laughs> oh shit I think that's what happened I'm not quite sure but that's when the second video came out with the same woman that tried to tear my house down before it's trying to tear my house down again and I'm like what but it's a new age now yeah. so now you know hoes is winning as the, the internet would say <laughs> so they like you know they yeah. rose to him like how you gonna blame her <laughs> yeah <laughs> how she try to tell you how <laughs> Listen. and then he got off the of internet he Ooh. got off of instagram i think he's back now but he got off for a good yeah he back months. he posting the wife and the family and they look happy but mm -hmm. um he's only been faithful <clears throat> he's only been faithful it, it, I guess by now, because he this was happening years after mm -hmm. with the other girl that was you. Mm -hmm. Five, four years of the whole marriage. They only been married twenty something, twenty years. Well, I don't know how long she's been with him, so I don't know how quick. I don't know if she was with him when I was with him. You know what I'm saying? Because she was. In no, the, I'm saying the wife. Oh, like so, yeah. him being married, it's safe to say that he only became faithful recently. If he's faithful now. Oh. I'm not saying he isn't. He isn't. I understand. I'm just but you know, that, patterns, it's hard yeah, to break Yeah, it's old hard patterns. to break those patterns. Some people you know? are not just meant to be monogamous. So maybe he's one of them. Mm. Now, being that the group, because you traveled with the group, mm -hmm. and I just have to ask, <laughs> was the, 
So the group was okay with you coming around, knowing that he had a wife. Wanye had a wife too, and Wanye had other women or, oh. or another woman. Okay. And actually, I think one of his other spiritual wives in, ended up having a baby. So Wanye, and then Nate was just single, so he did whatever he wanted to do. Why ain't nobody want Nate? <laughs> well, I what think was wrong they, with Nate? Nate probably seen Wanye in Sean's life and was like, I'm gonna just stay single. So, yeah, yeah, Nate was just single. And then, of course, Michael and um, mm-hmm. Sean have to fight. So Michael was no longer in the group. And um, what happened with that? Because everybody always wondered what happened to the bass. It made the group. Well, the bass. Who, the baritone. I, I loved Michael because he's probably the most down to earth person ever. Right. Um, and I knew him first. Him and Sean had a it was a lot that happened, but. The straw that broke the camel back was the fight that him and Sean had. He had a fight with Michael on a, on a cane. Why? He... He's still a, a brother with the end. What were they fighting that. about? Because um, Michael has scoliosis. Yes. And he wasn't making some of the tour dates. But then they'll find out that he was making some of the club dates. So because I think as a group, they all got paid regardless that they felt a little way about him getting paid. twice. Yeah. OK. And the man got to pay his bills. He got medical. <laughs> shit, he got medical bills. And then but he was, don't qualify for Medicaid. And it disability. was a lot more than that. But okay. it, I mean, it was basically that. Mm-hmm. But it was a lot of, you know, you know, brush offs or I don't care, you know, and him and Sean had a fight. Like a fist fight. A fight fight. Mm-hmm. So he put the cane down, said, fuck the scoliosis. He put, he Who won? Put, Who won? My baby did it. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Sean got his ass beat. I'm not saying he got his but, ass beat. Uh, but I'm just saying. He didn't win. So I don't you think he won. It, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I shout out to Michael. Michael, said. Michael and his curly roses or whatever it's called. I mean, you know, may everything be with him. But yeah, he's still the brother. He, You can tell that he's the brother from the, the group. Yes. Okay. Well, damn. The, the, and I, now, you know, come ninja. to think about it, like you glad he got his ass whipped at the time. No, what you because went through? I felt like I had to pick a, a side. Oh, you know? because you knew him. I knew Michael, and I really adored Michael yeah. as a person. And then I was, you know, going on this relationship with Sean, so I had to pick. Damn. Have you talked to him since? Who, Michael? Yeah. I mean, eventually, later on in our our relationship they started to have communication okay. with each other. And I did see Michael and it was all up. Okay, cool. Now, um, the wife, did the wife ever call you or talk to you about the box that you left? Did y'all ever talk about your relationship with her husband? I w- the only time we talked is when we were having Instagram beef. I called her. Oh, I said, yo, you need to get your, hu- you need to get your husband. Cause Ooh. it's about, like, about I'm enough. So if I can't talk to him, I'm going to talk to you as a woman. Just get your husband. And um, <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> she was just like, I don't know. I think she was just so confused. But I said, I don't know if you believe me. I don't know what he said to you, but just trust me. And she was like, I know he told me that he was in love with you. Oh, shit. Well, he couldn't, ha- he couldn't hide it. You see them emails. So he couldn't say he wasn't. So he had to be honest. And he had, well, what she said verbatim was, he told me he thought he was in love with you. That was what she said. For nine years? But fuck out of here. (laughs) Fuck out of here. She did say that was. In two pregnancies? She she said, he told me he thought he was in love with you. And I said, okay, well, get your husband because the Florida is about to come out. What part of Florida are you from? Hollywood. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> From so when you, to when you see Sharonda today and uh-huh. they seem to be happy, he posting her on the ground. I, I, yeah. You pray for her? I, I don't pray for her. I wish them, I loved him. Okay. Like I literally loved him. Okay. And I wish whatever it is that he needs, he finds. Mm. And I know she loves him. So mm. this is why I think the Ariane situation triggered me because like, I don't wish heartache on any female or yeah. any person. So I just wish whatever he needs, he finds so he can make her happy and she can make him happy. 
<laughs> we're gonna stop right here because mm-hmm. there's so much i could talk to you about like mm-hmm. you flew all the way from california <laughs> to come spill this aged barrel wine like mm-hmm. um and i know the ariane situation was such a big deal because it was such a big deal, yeah. i feel that ariane i mean she's still very young and that's another thing yes. and that's another thing and i asked her and i was like you know out of everything you don't feel a bit of compassion, but I think because they both got kids and he was treating them equal or thought maybe he bought mm-hmm. her a purse and bought Melody a house. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm like, that's the like, same. I feel that, you know, and I know a lot of people and they were upset with me. With I was that upset interview. with you. I know. I was, I was like, t- and I'm a whole side piece <laughs> according to the world. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Why were you upset? Because I just, I, because of her, like she was so angry and yeah. she was like, she called me the side piece of the world or the year or something. Yeah. I'm like, I don't care if she said that in food and garden on CNN to her, you were. She had a marriage with this man mm-hmm. for a lot of years. You came after that. Mm-hmm. So you have to understand that whatever she's going through, through her pain, through her sorrow, through her marriage, she got a divorce now. She got kids. She wanted to work it out. And if she has to look at you like you a side piece, let that lady look at you like you's a side piece because that's what you are to her. I think Melody was upset with me too. She unfollowed me. She unfollowed you. I said, Melody, what? I I asked the girl if she wanted to apologize. Nah, you. I was. I was a little. She was just like, "You married though." I'm like, "Listen, I'm, I'm not married to him." I know. I deal with my marriage very differently. You understand what I'm saying? So there. I I, first of all, I'm not gonna stay. Right. You okay. know, so mm-hmm. um, me and him can still be very cordial and run our business and he can sleep with whoever he wants to sleep with for free because mm-hmm. they ain't going to be able to get <laughs> none of what right. we got going on. Right, so, right, right. girl, you're going to get you some long, hard dick. <laughs> but I understood why she was upset, though. And why? I would have been upset because why? I was upset. Why? Because I felt like you wasn't pushing the boundary with her. You was be- allowing her to sit on a throne that she doesn't deserve. Oh, that's what it was about. Okay, because my platform is kind of big. Yeah, it's kind of big. I mean, that was like, but she doesn't deserve <laughs> that voice. Yeah. But um, Ariad, um, I know th- disrespect I, to her. I, I understand. I understand that, and I feel like, and here's my position. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she wasn't married. So Martel was married, mm-hmm. and Martel had an opportunity to talk to me. Mm-hmm. And I believe he backed out. He wanted to go to Dr. Heavily for whatever reason. But mm-hmm. I think this all could have been avoided. You understand what I'm saying? And so she felt like I was the most non-biased. And because, yes, I am a wife. I do represent family. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I, I have a I have a job to do. And people are in positions like her. And I feel like if I would have allowed her to be herself, which I did, mm-hmm. People would really see it, and that's what triggered you. That's and that's the reason me. why you're here. But you should have let her be herself. But then you should have, at the end, of, like when we about to wrap up right now, <laughs> you should have said you should have said a couple of words to her because I feel like the problem with women like that is yeah. because of the world now. I and think they she got feel, a reality check at the interview. So? Absolutely, the whole world went in on her because you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I do get very biased I, I appreciate that, when it though. comes to. You know, like strong allegations, things that can like really, really damage, right. damage people's lives when it comes to children, sexual assault, all that stuff. Right, right, right. But when it comes to someone who was in a consensual relationship mm-hmm. with a married man and the wife was consensual because it wasn't see, different. Like, see, Sharonda didn't know about you. Yeah, and that's the part that I didn't Melody know. Melody knew 80 percent of the time that this woman was fucking her husband and right. wasn't going to stop. OK, but so. I understand she had. Things built with him, and it's not as easy to leave. So I didn't know the backstory, and yeah. I was just looking at the story. Like I just, I don't care. You, be mad at him because I was yeah, mad at Sean. Yeah. I just didn't like the fact that she was dragging Melody yeah. the way she was, and I'm like, huh? As a like, yeah, she's hurt. <laughs> like what? How you? I mad think a at lot her? of people are ex- excited that you told me to my face, bitch. I was mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> even so even funny. my team was like, "What the fuck was that?" I was like, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> So, but I mean, she she did ask me. She was like, Tasha, can you please take it easy on me? I okay. just want to tell my story. She did ask me that in the beginning. Okay, you let her. I said, no problem. So Have I'm here to tell her. But I, but with me allowing her to be herself, people mm-hmm. saw it for what it was. Right. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? 
And so, and I think that was probably the best, you know, if not one of the best interviews that I've done because I did not influence that interview you at all. That. So I hope with that interview okay. and with the world coming down on her mm -hmm. or whomever, I hope she gets it now. Mm. That's all I hope. Now I have a bombshell question for you. Oh Lord. Okay. You ready? Uh-huh. He's still married. Sean is still married. Oh yes, he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. How are you going to feel after his wife watches this? Well, his wife should know all of this already. Okay. So, so I shouldn't gonna... be telling her anything she doesn't know. But having to relive it um, after they've gotten past this journey that he had with you. Well, when she sees my face, she should just turn the TV off. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to tell. I guess because it's your story yeah, to tell. Yeah, like it's my story to tell. I'm not revisit. I l literally never really spoke on this story again until I'm attacked. And the only reason why I'm speaking on it now is because of the Ariane situation. And I was so hurt that she didn't have compassion for the wife because I have compassion for Sharonda. And I hope she's well and I hope they have a happy relationship. And I hope that they found some, you know. Obviously, they had they posting Christmas pictures. And yeah. Shit so I hope they found some medium ground yeah. where they can understand each other and both of them can be happy with each other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, now there, like I said, there's so I'm gonna come to LA to get the rest of this wine that you got. Oh, I, some I will be in LA for a week interviewing you. Like, all right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this because there are so many relationships and, and and like I'm not gonna say anything because I don't want nobody calling you saying you better not fucking say nothing. I don't care. Bro. I know you don't uh -huh. care, but um, like I said, when we got legends sitting here, that 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 aged wine is the best. It is. It's the aged wine for me. <laughs> Avanti Wright. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank now, you real quick me. before we wrap up uh -huh. this, this is officially part one. Because okay. like I said, your life is... <laughs> every, I was like, can we? Can you stay an extra day? <laughs> you look like, Tasha, no. <laughs> I got to work. Uh -huh. um, where do you want people to fo uh, follow you, ask you questions? Well, I started a new Instagram. So, of, of course, Avante Wright is my Instagram okay. handle. Okay. But I want people to start following me on He Said versus She Said. Oh. Oh, that's my new Instagram. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said versus she said. What made you come up with that name? Because um, I'm very outspoken. Okay. I I love talking about relationships because okay. I'm either horrible at them or I'm very good at them. Okay. And I always wanted to hear a male's perspective. So we go through our verses where we talk about relationships and he tells me why men do certain things and I tell him why women do certain things. All right. So it's called he said sh versus she said. With that being said, <laughs> <laughs> now we gotta go. Thank you, Monty. No I feel like I just met a new girlfriend. I swear to God. Definitely. <laughs> yes. The queen is here. The queen is here. We belong together. And I know that I'm right How do you play with my heart? How do you play with my mind? You said we'd be forever You said our love wouldn't die <laughs> How could you love me and leave me and never say goodbye when I can't sleep at night without holding you tight? Girl, each time I try, I just break down and cry. Pain in my head all right after me dead. Spending the night on to the road. All the we go to the end of the road to the <laughs> I'm sorry, that song just came to mind. Hope y'all enjoyed this aged wine. Shout out to Avanti Wright for coming through, taking time out of her schedule, okay? To fly all the way to Atlanta to get a wine on this wine, okay? 
I got to call it the age wine series. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you know they age it in a barrel for like 10 years and the wine is just amazing, okay? Um, a lot there to process, right? Yeah. Um, so much so that we have some behind-the-scenes footage, uh, bonus footage, with Miss Avanti Wright on the app uh, detailing her relationship with Barry Hankerson, the uncle to Aaliyah. And she saw a little bit about what went on between him and R. Kelly and what she saw being on set, being, you know, a model and a uh, centerfold and things like that, okay? And so I just want us to thank her. Her Instagram is Avanti Wright on Instagram. But if you want to get personal, if you want to ask her some questions respectfully, okay? Um, I'm not saying that you can't ask the questions that you want to ask. You can, but there's a way to ask them, okay? You guys can head right now now on over to my app tashaklive.com download now just in case you are not a member we're going to start the live stream the q a with avanti at 10 p.m eastern standard time which is 7 p.m specific standard time okay thank you to everybody that donated during this live okay and i had to tell y'all listen we got that i ain't got it merch I ain't got it merch. T-shirts, hats, mugs, cups, wine glasses. I ain't got it. It's right below in this video. I don't know if you see the band right now. Go ahead and get it because we ain't got it. All right? Hit the wine glass. All right? Now, uh, with that being said, um, thank you to all my moderators. I appreciate y'all not blocking people and allowing people to have their own opinion. Okay? Please, guys, like this video. That's all we ask. Okay? We look at the analytics. We want to see what you guys like, what you don't like. Um, and so um, that helps us to tailor this content better towards you um also if you guys have tips on your favorite celebrities hit me on the instagram as you've always done okay unwind with tasha k also feel free to send me an email via unwind with tasha k at gmail.com and someone from our team will get right back with you if you want to advertise on our platform please feel free to hit up marketing at unwind with tasha k.com that is marketing at unwind with tasha k.com and chelsea will get back with you also thank you to jasmine we got some new team members coming on also we'll be introducing them probably tomorrow um and with that being said anything else sir? i forgot no. now i gotta go i see y'all on the app although we go to the end